Hi, my name is Alec Cumming and I'm an artist from Norfolk. My main focus is painting and I've been a full-time artist for over 10 years and I've exhibited internationally and have paintings in collections worldwide. The main drive of my painting over the last 10 years has been through the process of abstraction to create more of a sense of place rather than a representation of it. I have spent many years living abroad in India and now spend most of my time drawing inspirations from countries such as the US, Sri Lanka and Cyprus. I've always been drawn to countries such as this due to the beauty of the light and the sense of vibrancy within these places. Within this abstracted style of working, there are forms that lead the viewer to suggestions of things, places and sensations. This idea of semi-recognisable forms can suggest a narrative throughout the painting. These forms or shapes can appear through drawings, thoughts, ideas and lived or imagined experiences. Many of the new paintings I create may suggest spaces I know, vibrant fabrics or places, perhaps moments glimpsed whilst laying poolside, or even a collection of observed objects such as an overgrown veranda or stacks of potted plants, or a table laden with drinks. Many of the artists I relate to are from across the globe, from Roger Hilton and Alan Davey, two very prominent British abstract artists, to the works of Indian master K.G. Subramanian. Within all of their works, they respond to the idea of place in a very exciting way, using the process of abstraction. Alan Davy paintings are intuitive and gestural. Roger Hilton makes works that focus on reading the surface of the painting and responds to place in a very emotive way. K.G. Subramanian entwines narrative and objects within his bold, vibrant paintings. In this workshop, we are going to look at the process of abstraction of the landscape through drawing, disassembling the artwork and re-owning the image to create your own abstracted artwork. This is the process I use for a lot of paintings to create a sensation in the work, something that gives more than just a representation of a place, but you're able to engage in a much more dynamic way. We're going to need some very simple materials to make this artwork, small bits of paper, pencil, charcoals, glue and some paints and brushes all these things are very easy to get to hand to start a piece of work we need to gather some content for our paintings like a dictionary of imagery that we can use to create forms and compositions a really great and fun way to do this is to create unsighted observational drawing what do i mean by this well it's when you spend a good amount of time looking at a scene or objects or landscape that interests you and try to record it without actually looking at the page that you're drawing. So I'm going to show you here like this with some paper and I've got a pen, but you can use anything you like. So charcoal, graphite, biros, anything. So let's uh, start like that now. Okay, I'm going to be doing, showing you what I mean by observational drawing. It's where we take the pen and we look at a, a view and we just start drawing. Now I'm using an image from a trip that I went to in Goa. And importantly, I'm just keeping my pen on the surface. I'm not looking at the page. I'm just making a view of the image that I'm seeing. Now, this might sound like it takes a lot of concentration and it does for a while just trying to pick out some of the images that we can see. It's not important not to make it exact, but what we're trying to do is just get down all the images that we can see. And this creates content for what we're going to do later. Now, as you can see on the page, it doesn't really look like it's becoming anything, but what I'm actually doing is drawing all the forms I can see. Now, you don't want to take too long on this. You just want to keep it to sort of two to three minutes per image. And then after that, move on to another one. You can use charcoal, graphite, or pen like I'm using. I really like using pen, 
but it's nice to use lots of different mediums to make it interesting. So I'm just coming to the end of that now and what I've done is I've just spent two to three minutes working on this drawing and it's obviously very simple but what's the um, what I really want you guys to do is instead of using an image which I've been using is to get out there and find spaces that you really like and really interest you and follow those directions of that unsighted observational drawing and create something similar. We are not just drawing what we think should be there, but we are following what our eye is seeing with our pencil or charcoal. Try and use different drawing mediums to get a broad sense of styles and feels. The drawing shouldn't take you too long. I want you to spend two to three minutes per drawing. Make as many as possible, but try to get up and move around and do different angles, maybe four to five drawings. Remember, don't worry too much about what things look like. You're only trying to get down a sense of what's there. You've got 25 to 30 minutes to go off and do this. So after you're done, come back for your next part of the workshop. So now you've got your drawings, hopefully you have around five to six drawings gathered from where you were working. The next process of working into abstraction is something I like to do when generating new ideas. It's a disassembling of the drawings. What I want you to do is to either cut or tear each work into three places. This can be however you like, straight lines, circles, spirals. Try to think creatively how you want the drawings to be torn. It doesn't have to be regimented lines. Once we've done this, you should all have a pile of paper objects and shapes like mine. Hopefully you've been adventurous with your tearing and cutting and have some interesting pieces to look at. We're now going to use these shapes and objects as tools for creating compositions. So now take a large piece of paper, perhaps A1 size if possible, and start arranging torn up drawings into compositions. This could be recreating the place you were drawing from memory, or even, if you like, shapes to create completely unique compositions inside by some other place. The important thing is to try and use the marks and drawings to convey a space. Also, think about the cut and torn lines, how they sit on the page and can be used to orchestrate imagery. Once you're happy with your composition, try and start sticking things down. We've got Pritt Stick to do that. It should be a quick exercise. So I want you to take 10 to 15 minutes on this exercise and I'll see you back here then. Okay, part three, here we go. You should have by now stuck down all of your imagery that you've torn up using some, you, didn't have to, you don't have to use it all, but as you can see from my image here, I've created this composition of torn up pieces that have created a piece of, an abstract piece of work in its own right. But what we're going to do now is we're going to take charcoal and pencils and start working into these drawings, okay, these collages, and make them into kind of abstract collage drawings. Now, this is a process that is quite good because it sort of means that we start to sort of delete areas and really focus on what we want our composition to be. So I'm going to grab some charcoal now and some graphite sticks. If you want to use markers and pens, you can feel free, but we're going to keep it monochromatic for now. Color comes later once we've figured out what the composition is going to be. So I'm going to start drawing into this work like this. And it might be that you pick out the negative spaces that you haven't necessarily filled or you want to draw right through lines of uh, of images stuck down. It's sort of, you want to go with your instinct and you don't want to make it too regimented because this is how we kind of discover composition using different ideas of uh, 
you know, different from different places and different forms and shapes. And we start to lose the idea of it being a representation of a place. And now it just becomes about the imagery being yours to conduct composition with. OK, so I'm going to start now doing that and start filling in areas that I think. Now, I've been thinking about this for a few minutes off camera, just thinking about what I wanted to where I'd be placing objects. I'm going to do this now and turn around and get on with my work. You guys can do the same. See you guys in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and we'll go move on to the next stage. So now you should have spent a bit of time working into the image and the collage and created a composition not like this, but perhaps something similar to this, where you've blocked areas out, drawn extra lines, and really divided the space up. So this is where we now start to create a final painting, an abstract artwork. And this is the next stage of our workshop. This is where we now take everything we have done and turn it into one piece. I want you to take the paint and brushes and create something new. This is the bit where we explore materials. Now that you have created this vocabulary and bank of imagery to play with, the beauty of abstraction is having the freedom and confidence to explore compositions on the surface. The next part of this workshop is where we want to create a painting. You can use all the ideas we've created in the workshop to add to the work. You have lots of time to do this, so we're going to take 30 minutes to consider the to consider the composition and work on the painting. Try to start putting down what marks immediately and think about the space you're going to create. Allow areas to dry if you need to, although sometimes paint can take a little bit longer to dry and have the freedom to kind of work from original drawings and also add marks and lines and play with the composition. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do when I start making my paintings is I tend to just muddy up the uh, areas around the paintings and just sort of, I don't really think too much about what it's going to look like. So you're going to take about half an hour on this. Nice things about having a time limit on a piece of work is that you have to move the paint around in a sort of fast way. It gives you, doesn't really give you the opportunity to stop and worry too much about it. And this again goes back to that whole idea of getting a sensation for, of a place, rather than trying to get a representation of it. And we can often get a feel of what a place is, rather than without actually having to look at an exact copy of it. So I've filled that area in now. And now all this area is now wet with paint. So I'm gonna actually make it quite a loose painting at the beginning, and I might tighten some bits up later. So I'm gonna get a mixed color of some lighter. Now, cause I've wetted, made this whole area wet, I can go in with my paint. You can either use acrylic, I'm using acrylic paints, but you can use any paint you like and start blocking areas in. Now, from your charcoal drawing, you might have an idea of a composition you want to do, or you might just want to use that basic compositional element as a starting point, as a leaping off block. You don't have to use this draw, this, your original charcoal drawing and collage as a basis for your painting. But I have used it as a kind of, I've kind of taken areas of the composition. So I'm gonna carry on working on this now and I'll see you in a bit.
Okay, so after working on your paintings for the last half an hour, maybe 40 minutes if you needed it, we've come to a point, a finishing point. Now it's always a good point time to set yourself maybe a deadline or, you know, some restrictions say I'm going to stop now because it's always the point where you kind of say I want to stop and step back and critique it. And now abstract painting does involve a lot of kind of this idea of um, stop, start, kind of you analyze and make sure you know where you're at with it. And now my, I, when I come to actually stopping a piece of work, I like to stand back and have a look. Now what I want you guys to do now at the end of this workshop, which is where we are, is to look at where you have, look at what you've done, go over all of your drawings, your collages and your paintings and think about what they mean to you. Do they say something about a specific, specific place? Do they say something about a specific mood, feeling and discuss it with each other? And that's the really exciting thing about making abstract paintings is they create points of discussion and points of reference. So now we're finished with painting, we can now look at what we've made. I want you to go off and chat with each other about that for the next 10-15 minutes and that will bring us to the end of the workshop. Thanks for all your hard work today. Hope this session has been really useful for you and it's helped you form some interesting ideas for future projects and made you think about the process of creating artwork in a new way.